So we now have our initial pass of particles in the scene. They look like rain, well a bit more like rain than they did when we initially started. They're blowing in the right direction. The problem we have now is that, if I just make this a bit bigger, the particles are flowing through the character and if we look underneath you can see that they're flowing through the floor as well. So the first thing we need to do is make these particles collide with the other geometry in the scene. So let's just stop this simulation. So let's click select the floor and we're going to go to end mesh create passive collider. While we're here we'll select the character model and do the same. So in effect we've created two passive colliders each attached to these models. And if we go to the attribute editor you see we now have this rigid shape node attached with lots of attributes that we can adjust to affect when how the particles interact with the objects. So as you can see we have, if I just zoom in down here, if I turn solver display on to collision thickness let's just, there we go, I'll just turn that off again you can see we get this yellow mesh and that's just showing where the border of the collision will happen. If we make that bigger you can see if we look at her foot one, one. It's just making that offset a little bit thicker. So let's go back to the default value. Now these are attributes, bounce, friction and stickiness. We can play around with those once we've actually got the particles in the scene and we can see what they're doing. So now we've made these collidable, let's play the back the uh, simulation. As you can see the rain's now flowing down hitting the floor which is what we wanted and if you remember we've got wind in the scene so the wind is blowing these back so at the moment these are just colliding with the floor blowing back and because they're then exiting the emitter they disappear, they die, they don't exist anymore these particles you can just make out they're collide also colliding with the uh, character geometry so everything's colliding we just need to now think about how these interact with those objects because in reality when rain hits an object it doesn't just slide or move in an angle it explodes into other raindrops so let's add that in now ignore my auto save um, select the particles we're going to go to End Particles, Particle Collision Event Editor. What this is going to do is when the particles collide with something it will trigger an event and this, what we dictate now, is what will happen. So we have Particle 1 selected up here. If we scroll down here we can see we can dictate what event type we want. Do we want it to emit? a different type of particle or do we just want it to split into other particles? In this instance we want it to split. We could have a random number of particles in there so maybe we just, for now, we'll just set it as 10. Let's click create event. We'll leave this open. Let's just go back to the beginning and play this. So now if we zoom in What you can see is as particles hit the floor, they're exploding into 10 other particles, but then the wind is blowing those backwards. You can even see them, these new particles, then again colliding with the foot as they're being blown backwards. So that's all working fine, except we want them to collide with the floor and explode, but we don't want them to blow backwards. We also want to play around with the look of it a little bit more, but we can come back to that once we've got them not physically moving. So let's close that, go back. Now we already have our particle shape 2 node selected. Let's just go in here. So particle 1 is our main rain which is falling. Particle 2 is the new event uh, particle which we just created. So let's look in here 
and basically initially we don't want it to be blown back so we don't want it to be affected by the nucleus so let's go in here let's close some of these down so we can see what we're doing in fact I'm going to pull off the attribute editor just so we can make it a little bit bigger so we're going to be uh, working in here a bit more right here we go dynamic properties all we're going to do is check ignore solver wind I need to move that back up just so I can uh... right play now as you can see the particle the rain's hitting the floor it's exploding yes we've got some inherited velocity in there so it's going to be have some momentum with it which is just what we want but it's not getting blown back the raindrops are it's exploding the raindrops are landing on the floor and then coming to a gradual halt so now we have that in there you know just while we're on this dynamic properties tab you can affect well the dynamic properties of those particles down here so you can affect the uh, the mass if you want them to be heavier, heavier particles uh, you can give them their own wind effect so if we wanted the wind for these to be blowing in the opposite direction we could dictate our own here but for now this is working just fine so I'm going to close this down and you'll probably not be noticing at this point as well that there's an awful lot of particles in the scene and it's starting to slow things down so we'll address that as well um, shortly right Let's just play that back. So now the particles are hitting the floor, they're bouncing, that's ideal. But we maybe want them to uh, bounce a little bit more. And this is where this uh, rigid shape node comes in. In here, we could increase the bounce up to one, and as you can see, those raindrops are a lot more dramatic now. And, you know, I quite like it being a bit more dramatic, so I quite like that. If we increase the stickiness, and let's just go back to the beginning so you see this more. Basically, you'll see nothing's happening. And this is because the particle's hitting the floor, but then it's just stuck. So the floor's not letting it go. For this type of simulation, we don't want any stickiness. So I'm going to drop that back down. We want them to explode, fly into the air. That's ideal. And obviously, friction will control as they're sliding along the surface how far they slide, how fast they slide and again I'm quite happy to just leave this as it is. Now going back to the problem of the amount of particles in the scene what we ideally want them to do is after a while as they start to build up they'll start to disappear. Let's go back into our attribute editor and look at our particle 2 attributes. Let's close these down. Now initially as we go up to the top as you can see this is open here each particle's lifespan is being told to live forever. So what we can do is maybe specify a random age so between one well if the lifespan is one let's just if you just see how, how long they last they don't last very long, in fact some of them, the lifespan, lifespan of one is so short that they just vanish straight away. So let's increase that to 10. We'll just see how long these hang around. These particular ones down here. So you should see them vanish. There we go. So that was long enough for them to linger and we could maybe randomize that a little bit too. So they're not all just sticking around. So now the particles are disappearing but it would be nicer if they were a bit more subtle so they maybe faded away rather than just went pop. Before we do that though I'm going to stop this. I'm going to scroll down to our shading menu. If you remember we did this on the actual rain which is falling and this time I'm going to use a blobby surface. So let's zoom in a bit more so we can see this in action. So this has just turned them into spheres. Now obviously you have your opacity here so you can make them a lot more solid. 
So now if we play this. So as you can see, they're just um, set up as spheres now. So now we can, now we've got that in. We can go back up to the top, and we have a particle size radius here. As you can see, we can make them really big. We can make them smaller. We can also play around with that and make them a bit more random. So our radius scale here. We could set the uh, radius to be dictated by the age. So the older they are, the smaller they'll get. But we have to also adjust the uh, the graph here. So this is where they start and as they get older, they get smaller. Sometimes you have to just rewind. As you can see, with it set by the age, they now actually are so small. So let's just increase this so we set that to 20 and we'll maybe add in a bit of randomization as well like so as you can see here they're just starting to get smaller as they're getting older maybe set it to normalize age as well But again, we don't really want them to get smaller. What we can do is set that back to 1. So basically, over time, they're not getting smaller as they're, uh, from when they're born to when they die. Let's change this to maybe particle ID. Let's go back. Because each particle has its own ID. Let's see if we can just make them so can see now when they're created they're randomly well they're basically a random size which is a lot better so if we reduce this back down so maybe five so you can see how just playing around with these we're already starting to affect the overall look of these particles of rain they may be a bit big and what we could do is go back up to the radius here and just affect it globally so maybe 1.5 and that's just made it a little bit smaller if we turn down the randomness here they're a little bit more uniform just with a subtle uh, change in size and again we could just maybe go back up change that to 2 again but again we've We've now got the particles in there, they're exploding, we've got a bit of randomness in the size, but they still just pop and disappear. So what we could do now is play around with the opacity of those. So let's go down to select the particle itself actually. So we've got the floor selected there. So let's close this down. go down to shading again and open up the opacity scale and just like we did with the size we can adjust the transparency or the opacity of each particle so again we know we want them to vanish so we can adjust the graph here so that they start solid and as the time goes by they vanish so let's start this playing just so we can see them in the world. Now at the moment there's nothing influencing, there's nothing in there telling it when this should be triggered. So again we could use normalized age. And then we'll increase this just to, again let's just rewind and play again just to see if this works. As you can see now they're starting to fade away. Reduce that. So rather than popping, we set that to age, you see. 
it's basically just a global age. Normalized stage just gives you a nicer. And we can also add some randomness into that as well, just like we did before. So we close that down. Go back to our main camera and let's just see how it's uh, shaping up. So as you can see looking from this view, we can see the particles colliding with the body, they're colliding with the floor and they're starting to fade out very subtly. So I think that's the rain and the particles more or less initially set up. We could spend a lot more time playing around with all those values, but for now I'm quite happy with how they are looking. We could maybe get them to stick to the body a little bit more, um, but to do that we would just select the body, go into the rigid shape, and play around with the collisions. Make the body more, well, increase the stickiness so that when the particles collide with the body they stick to it, or perhaps increase the friction so when they collide they bounce off but then if they hit the body again they'll uh, the friction will hold on to them a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this part of the tutorial here let you play around, I'll save this file so you can play around with all these attributes get the look that you're happy with and I think what we might do in the next video is just start to look at uh, implementing Bifrost uh, adding in the splash uh, because there's a lot for us to look into on there. So I'll leave you this leave this for you to play with, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.